my, my friend Parker Brooks actually introduced me to Bitcoin back in 2009. Right. And um, my background's computer science, so uh, I took a, a, a kind of a, a good look at it. And my, my summary for me was, okay, this threatens state sovereignty. This, this will have a very difficult time. My context for that was, you know, I'd, I'd lived through the peer-to-peer -peer world in digital music when yeah. basically people were trying to outlaw TCP IP, you know. <laughs> um, you know, you said we had, you know, I was part of the Nullsoft team that made Winamp and Shoutcast and ultimately Nutella, which powered LimeWire, BearShare, et cetera. And, you know, and from my point of view, I'm like, man, if they manage to get rid of, you know, all, all these P2P things, they're going to, you know, they're, they're for sure going to manage to get rid of this thing. But, you know, then I kept an eye on it over the years and, and watched it get, you know, really too big to be shut down. Mm. Um, so around 2015 for me is, is when I jumped in in a, in a, in a significant way um, personally, um, you know, both with my like capital, but also my attention, you know, just, just paying attention. Um, end of 2015, I moved here to Paris and met Pascal Gauthier, who at the time was the first seed investor in a little Par Parisian company called Ledger. Mm. that made a hardware wallet to secure uh, cryptocurrency, protect private keys, secure transactions, uh, make sure that what you see is what you sign when you're signing a transaction. And then it was around 2018 when I realized how big Ledger could be because I realized that Ledger was just this kind of low beta on the whole space. You know, just like Cisco in the 90s relative to the internet, if you believe that there will be more digital assets tomorrow than there were yesterday and you believe that security um, is going to be very crucial in that world of digital assets. I mean, first of all, if you don't believe those two things, then you either got your eyes closed or you're an idiot. Mm. Um, and so for me, around 2018 is when I realized that, you know, a bet on um, digital assets, security and self-custody yeah. was a very safe bet. Um, and I got increasingly involved with Ledger from that point forward. Absolutely. It's fascinating to hear that story. Uh, uh, you say you kind of went full in in 2015. Was was part of that kind of the ab advent of smart contracts and you kind of seeing what the opportunity and potential was lying ahead I in think, terms of... I think I didn't really understand that well in, until even the summer of 2020. Um, you know, summer of 2020 for me, you know, looking at smart contracts and realizing the power, the potential power of, of this technology, you know, the power of building a world computer. Yeah. Um, and I mean power, by the way, like good and bad. Power is, is not necessarily a positive force, right? Mm -hmm. Power is, a, is, um, you know, is, is, is just a force. Um, yes. You know, you can use a brick to um, build a house or break a window, right? Um, is fire good or bad? Um, but I realized the power of, um, you know, of having a world computer. And also we had this global pandemic and, you know, two trillion of stimulus in the U.S. and a trillion of stimulus in Europe and... I realized this confluence of, um, you know, kind of what was happening in society, um, the reality of inflation, and the fact that we've never had inflation, you know, at a, at a moment in history when every 21-year-old knows how to be denominated in something other than the dollar or the <laughs> euro, whether that's sneakers or Bitcoin or Ethereum is almost irrelevant. You know, we actually, you know, when I was 21, I didn't know how to use anything yeah. except for the dollar, but every... 21 year old kid today knows how to, you know, turn $500 into $1,500 yeah. on, you know, on, on a grailed or, 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 or one of, you know, whatever, one of the, one of some sneaker site. Right. So, um, you know, th th I realized, you know, kind of these universes are colliding and that that's when I really, you know, stepped up. And then by the end of 2020, I had resigned at LVMH and joined Ledger. So, I mean, you know, you mentioned there about, about um, power can be both good and bad. And as we're on the path to, to, towards kind of regulation and, and global adoption, what advice would you have for people that are entering the space in terms of um, security? I know there's a lot of conjecture around security around the space. What would your advice be to those people coming into the space for the first time? You know, look, I'm, I'm a technologist and... Um but, I, but because of what I've done, being in digital music for 20 years and then working with LVMH for five years on, you know, kind of digital culture more broadly, um, you know, I'm kind of a student of the way that technology is, is changing culture. Mm. Um, I think that, you know, fundamentally you have this new invention. The new invention is digital scarcity. And the reality is, is, is that, you know, with digital scarcity, um, you have security challenges, mm. right? So whether that is in your hand or at a custodian, 
security matters. Yeah. It matters for you or it matters for the custodian. And if it's with the custodian, then your security between you and the custodian really matters. Um, and you know, the, the, the reality is, is that if not self-custody, then why crypto, yeah. right? Why not just PayPal or Starbucks cash, mm -hmm. right? If not, um, if not self-custody, if self-custody is not possible. Um, but in that world, I mean, security is paramount because I now have this digital thing that I could lose and I could lose at scale. Right. I mean, as we know from the movie Die Hard, stealing a billion in gold bars is really <laughs> like logistically difficult. Right. But stealing a billion in, you know, crypto or clone X or, you know, crypto punks or whatever is, you know, or, you know, stealing those at scale is, is, is much simpler logistically. Um, and our job is to make that difficult. Right. If not for everyone, then for ourselves. Mm. Um, so what does that mean? Well, you have to keep your private keys safe. So where are your private keys, right? And if you don't know the answer to that question, then you are not safe, period, mm -hmm. right? The other is, is that, you know, it's, we call it endpoint security because it's at the moment that you make a transaction. You have to remember that your value is secure on the blockchain. That's exactly what blockchains do is they secure your value on this public ledger. Um, so you have, you know, two big points of insecurity. One, you know, where are your private keys? Can someone pretend they're you? Mm -hmm. And the second is when you make a transaction, do you know what you're doing? Do you actually know what you're doing, right? And for almost anyone, when they're doing a, a transaction on OpenSea, they have no idea what they're doing because they can't actually see it. They can't see clearly the contract that they're signing, right? Yeah. It's like if you got an email from DocuSign and instead of opening the document, reading it and signing it, you just like click the checkbox in the email and said, oh, I'm done, right? That's what most people are doing, except also the results are immutable, right? So it's it's incredibly dangerous. So, you know, this is why I would say it's, it's a few things. It's um, having hardware security. First of all, your phone is fundamentally incapable of protecting digital value, period, right? It's like, it's like if I gave you the task of protecting, you know, that billion in gold bars in a building. Yeah. And then I said, oh, and by the way, I'm going to put a nightclub and a kindergarten and a shopping mall on the ground floor, right? Good luck <laughs> securing that building, right? That's what you're, that's the task that your phone is trying to do. And, and it's, not built for this and it absolutely cannot do it. I mean, even Chrome has had like six zero days in the past, you know, four weeks. Um, iOS has had a couple in the past couple of months. Like, you know, getting at these devices is possible. You need hardware security. With that, then you have to then protect your private key. And now when you make a transaction, you have to be sure that what you see is what you sign. And if you are blind signing, meaning you're signing, uh, you know, a, 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 um, a smart contract without knowing what the contract does, you know, just know that you're in danger. Very good answer. Very good answer. And, uh, you know, education is, is paramount, especially in this space. And on the subject of, of, of security, is there anything in the space that you feel it's, is lacking or you would like to see come into the space? I think that, you know, we're at a place where consumers need to be asking anyone who is handling their value what, what their security model is. If you, even if you are just buying into an NFT project, is that NFT project um, protecting the contract that you are buying into that you believe has value, that's why you're buying it? Are they protecting that with a software wallet in a browser? Mm. If so, you should know that that entire contract could disappear tomorrow, right? Or could fall into the wrong hands tomorrow. If you are keeping your money with a custodian, what is their security? Right. Um, are they using Ledger Enterprise or something homegrown? Is it good? I don't know. You know, um, have they had a hack recently? Is that your best your best guess at that? Um, I think that the really, you know, having a software wallet, uh, I'm sorry, having a hardware wallet and keeping your value, you know, in that hardware wallet, having the backup of that hardware wallet, having your um, seed phrase in, in an extraordinarily um, safe place, not in your apartment, where an attacker could could come in and get it. These are these things are are critically important. We do a lot of um, of security uh, education with Ledger, so we have La Ledger Academy. We're all over Twitter. We've now got Ledger Quest inside of um, uh, inside of Sandbox. We have more quests coming with with lots of uh, crypto communities. But you're right, education is really important and um, you know highly, highly, highly leveraged. And there's a reason that educated people become Ledger customers.